Sometimes when the opportunity affords itself, I like to help our children with their assignments. And it's quite interesting, one of our children may be poring over a math problem. The teacher has given the assignments, they're going through the page and working through the math assignment, but then they'd be stuck on a particular problem. And try as they may, they just can't figure it out. They try this approach, doesn't work. Try the other approach, doesn't work. And sooner or later, uh, uh, that, that youngster would throw her hand up in despair and say, I don't know what to do or where to turn. But then sometimes, uh, because of uh, the memory that I have of working through those uh, problems, or thank God for Google, <laughs> work through and see, hey, for this type of problem, here is how you solve it. Sometimes I pass by and say, have you thought of this approach? And may just give a clue or two. And immediately you see the light bulb going off. It unlocks that bottleneck, that log jam, and the child is able to work it through. Ah, I remember that, she might say, and works the problem through to its correct conclusion. You know, the Holy Spirit has been sent to us as a teacher, and the Holy Spirit helps to solve those hard-to-crack situations in our lives and experience. When it comes to knowing the will of God, one of the keys that we are learning about this week is this, that we need to discern the Holy Spirit's witness. God has sent the Holy Spirit to lead and to instruct us and to show us clues and to give us instructions that will help us make it through, especially when we are stuck. First, let's turn to the book of Isaiah. We're looking at Isaiah, and this is Isaiah chapter uh, 30. This is Isaiah chapter 30, and we are looking at a, a profound passage of Scripture. And the backdrop to this text is this, that God will be gracious to his people, that God even though we at times can be rebellious or feel that we know what we need to do and take our own course, that he in his love and mercy will instruct us and lead us. He will even turn away the reproach that we have brought on ourselves and he will make a way for our victory and for our breakthrough. Let's look at Isaiah again, chapter 30 and verse... 21. The Bible says, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it, whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. If you should read the rest of the passage, it was one where God is saying, hey, even though, even though you refused to turn, I'm going to turn things around for you. Gone are the days when you're going to be lost in obs obscurity or in the fog of confusion. He says, you are finally going to be able to see your way through. You are finally going to be able to hear from someone who can instruct you correctly. He says, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way walk in it. Whether you turn to the left or whether you turn to the right, wherever you go, you will have that guide with you. And this is where we thank God for the presence of his Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who comes as an instructor, as a teacher, as a counselor, as a guide. As we seek the will of God, in addition to opening his word, in addition to exploring the facts of the circumstances and really being clear on what we're facing, in addition to seeking him in prayer, we are encouraged now to listen and to watch for the leading, to discern the move of the Holy Spirit. 
This is such a powerful passage here in Isaiah chapter 30, because again, it teaches us and shows us that there is power available if we would but trust and yield to God's instruction. Now let's turn to another book uh, of another passage of scripture. This time we're looking at the book of Acts and Acts chapter 13 and verse 2 will be the next passage that we'll contemplate as we explore again receiving the Holy Spirit's witness, discerning what the Holy Spirit is saying. This is Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. Here's what the Bible says. As they ministered to the Lord, speaking of those leaders and teachers who had now come to the church in Antioch, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. This is the Holy Spirit giving direct instruction. Because now we are told, that Barnabas and Saul had returned from Jerusalem and that now at the church in Antioch that certain prophets and teachers were there and as they were ministering and serving, the Holy Spirit had a specific purpose and function for these two, Barnabas and Saul. And not leaving this to anyone else, the Holy Spirit gives clear instructions. He says, separate to me these two, for the work that I have called them to. You know, as children of God, we are also called for a special work. God has designed you for a purpose, my friend, and he wants to fulfill that purpose. And as we seek his will, we are to listen for and to discern the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said here, you pick these two aside. And as they separated them for the work, the Bible says in verse, verse 3, then having fasted and prayed and laying hands on them, they sent them away. They were now deployed. After being discovered by the Holy Spirit, they were developed and deployed for service. And so, my dear friends, today we have the privilege of watching and looking for the witness, discerning the witness of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come as a comforter, as a guide to you and me. And so we should be praying constantly, come Holy Spirit, come and lead me, come and instruct me, come and guide me today. Is there a difficulty that we have to work through? Is there some relationship that may be strained is there some problem or, or impossibility that just seems to be uh, dislodgeable? <laughs> it just seems to be set there. The Holy Spirit has been sent to guide us. And if we would avail ourselves and make ourselves open to his leading and instruction, we will, as the scripture says, hear a voice behind us saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Today, let us walk in the will and the way and the purpose of God. And let us thank him for the Holy Spirit who has been sent to be our teacher. Let us pray. Father, you are so wonderful. Before we have called, you have answered. You have thought of every need we have before we even encounter the reality of that need. And you have supplied it so beautifully, so elegantly, so bountifully. We thank you today, God. Thank you for your love. We thank you for considering us, for elevating us and allowing us even this privilege of having the Holy Spirit. Today we are praying for an extra ounce of discernment that we may know your leading, that we may discern the move of your Spirit, that we may be sensitive to his guidance, to his impulses, that we may not gloss over those clues or impressions or clear instructions that he gives, but that our hearts would be softened and impressible 
by the grace of God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for every listener. I place before you their circumstances, their lives, their opportunities, their thoughts. We place everything before you. And we ask you, God, take their hand and lead them on, onward. Onward to victory, onward to success, onward to a deeper knowing, to a deeper longing for you. And we thank you, God, for this abiding presence. Make it be so real to us today that we would not desire anything greater, anything more than to be in your presence and to cultivate your presence. Thank you for answering and hearing us today. And just as you spoke to the folk who were gathered there in the church in Antioch, speak to our hearts today that we may walk in the light of your will. For we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.